Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my regular expressions tutorial, where I will teach you everything you want to know about regular expressions and really focus in on how to use regular expressions with the programming language called Python. If you didn't watch part one, you have to, because I'm going to continue onwards, and I'm not going to review anything that I covered in part one, so definitely watch that instead. Okay, well, remember in the last tutorial how we were searching through thousands of pages of documents to find the name Jennifer. Well, if you did did what I showed you to do, you almost definitely missed a few of them. The reason why is because some Jennifers refer to themselves as Jen, some refer to themselves as Jenny. So you're going to have to create a new regular expression that covers for those people who use a different name. And how we're going to do that is with the OR code that is inside of regular expressions. And if you wanted to search a document for all Jennifers or Jens or Jennies and also receive their last names and remember the B will match for any space that precedes or follows a whole word and this B will match for when there is no space separating characters just so you know. But we're going to use the lowercase B in this situation and I'm going to surround this with quotes and then if we're looking for the last name we just use the backslash W meaning character and the plus sign meaning one or more characters followed by another ending of that word. And if you do this, this will return Jennifer, Jen, or Jenny from any document that you search within. And I'm gonna get into coding here in just a minute. Now you could be really funny about this and actually get the same results by doing this. And I'm just gonna show you this. Say you wanted to search for Jennifer or NNY or N like this, and then you want to signal in on any word that begins with J-E followed by one to six of these characters that precede it. So this is me being funny, but I'm going to show you really the shortcut isn't really going to get you anywhere. And again, I'm using, I have to type in exactly the same code again. So this would be kind of a catchy way of doing what we did previously, which again, I'm going to show you Jennifer or Jen or Jenny backslash B looking for the last name, followed by another one. You can see that being kind of tricky with this, and I could actually be more tricky, I could actually cut out all the letters that are used multiple times here. And you can see I saved myself a little bit of space, but this is why regular expressions get really complicated because a lot of people try to do tricky things like this. And do they work? Yes. Are they extremely hard to understand for some people? So. You can see it saved you a couple characters, but it's a lot more confusing. So I like to err on the side of being understandable rather than being confusing. So that's how I, why I do things. A lot of times I could do things a lot shorter, but I choose not to. So just so you're 100% certain, this will match with any of these words in text. And that's exactly what that regular expression there does. Now, do you see how I surround this, these three words that I'm searching for with these braces. Well, if I wanted to actually perform this specific search again later on in this regular expression, I could do so by just going backslash one. This would actually call, this is another thing that confuses people about regular expressions. This reference here, backslash one, would actually redo this code as if it was already there. So to elaborate, if I would take this and put this there, that is the same as if I would go in here and redo it again, okay? So, and if I had, additionally, if I had brackets, the reason why that's one is because that's the first time I used these brackets. Now, let's say I also used those brackets right here. Well, I could pay reference to that by going backslash two. So that's how that little tool there works. Again, it shortens up your regular expressions and to a certain extent makes them really, really confusing. But either way, that is another thing you can do with regular expressions. And you can also reference the beginning of a line of text with a caret symbol. So let's say I wanted to find all sentences that begin with the word cat. Well, I just simply put in a caret symbol like that followed by cat and then backslash s because I want to reference cat, not cats or whatever. So, and remember this references a space in code. And then if I wanted to be able to capture the entire sentence that begins with cat, I would follow this up with a series of characters 
and then a dollar sign which signifies the end of a sentence and probably to be safe because of punctuation I'd want to use this character meaning the period because it will match everything except new lines so basically any character so if this is exactly what you would do if you were looking for sentences to begin with the word cat so let's do some real code though now if you want to use regular expressions in Python you need to import the RE library and that is exactly how you would do that. Now, I have a file here saved called random characters. If I open it up, you'll see it right there. And I'm going to show you real quickly here exactly how to access that. So I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to retrieve the, all of the information in that file. Dot text. If you don't know what I'm doing here, uh, go back and watch my Python tutorial. It explains how to work with files. Here, I'm just creating a junk string file. That's it, but I'm gonna store some information in here in a second. And now I'm going to cycle through all of the lines of text that are in this file that I imported here. And I'm going to assign those lines of text to this string that I created. And then I can print this to the string. If I would jump up here, doink. See, so it grabbed all the information from this file named random characters. Well, now I'm going to use regular expressions on this stuff. I'm going to create a new function called patfinder1, meaning a reference to pattern finder. And inside of Python, you use the compile method to define the regular expression that you want to search for. In this case, to keep it simple, I am going to look for a literal line of text being this guy right here. So I'm looking for this in this file, and it's right there at the very beginning. And then, and I'm gonna get into a bunch of these different methods that are available, but then I'm going to use the search method from inside of the RE library that we imported here to search for the regular expression that I defined above. And all I'm doing is referencing that regular expression here, and then I'm going to reference the string that I created from that file. And then I can print to screen, just like this, doink. This was from the original file, and this is the string of text that I was able to locate. That's what the group method does for you. And you can also use the start method. These are a whole bunch of different methods that are available in this library. And I can print all that information out. And you can see basically what the group does is it prints out the entire string that it was able to find inside of this file. And start will tell you the index position where that string first starts. And remember, it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth. Then n prints out the index for the ending of that string. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it always goes one ahead from what you're searching. And if you use span, it prints out both the initial index as well as the last index. And if we jump in here again, show you the find all. And with the find all function, it's not going to give me a whole lot, but it basically in this circumstance is going to create a way for me to iterate through all of these little guys that I was able to find in here. Boink. And you can see it was able to return not only the first one. Remember I did the find all method because it's located right there and it's also located right there. So it printed those out both of the locations, both of the patterns that matched my regular expression that I defined. And I'm basically going through all of the methods that are available to you with the RE library here. Most of the useful ones, I'm not going through every single one of them. And I can also split these guys. Or I could substitute values that I find within here. So what I'm going to do is put real text in the locations where the regular expression matched. As you can see there, and I'm going to print the screen, sub found, and if I run this, 
you can see exactly that I created a list right here with this split function. What it did was it located all of the locations where the regular expression matched. So here, that's what this blank space is designating. And then it split everything until it got to the point where the regular expression matched again. And it split the whole entire document into these individual pieces. And then you can see using the substitution, I was able to import real text where AA1B used to be at the beginning of this string and at the end of this string. So that's a basic rundown of how to manipulate regular expressions inside of Python and a whole bunch of other things about Python So and regular expressions. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. If anything's confusing, I will do whatever I can to explain it and there will be more code examples coming up. Till next time.